Josh. Josh Stevens. MZ. Michael Zwirling. Is poor Dave there? I don't know. Is poor Dave there? I'm right here, MZ. Hi, poor Dave. How in the world are you? I'm doing well, MZ. How are you? In case people don't know, it's one of my shticks. I call everybody I like poor, like poor somebody. <laughs> right. Like poor Josh. Even but yourself? But anyhow, yeah, me too. Poor old beleaguered MZ. It's true. Um, I like myself, so... <laughs> you might as well, right? Yeah, because what's the alternative? Right. Hating myself. and That's no good. But there's so much hate that's going on out there. Should this be an anti-hate show? Sure. What do you have any ideas to, to spread the love? To, to, no. No, no I, but uh, you do. That idea. No, no, you don't? Yeah, I do. I was hoping you would and that Josh would, and I would just sort of sit here. And you guys would do most of the talking so I could do most of the chewing of a delicious pizza. Well, I'll tell you what. You go ahead and take two minutes to do that, and I'm going to tell people what I have going out on out at the Dave Cave. Now, if you're looking for a pick-me-up, you're looking for something to pick up your mood, of course, the tangy tangerine is a no-brainer. You have to have that in your arsenal. I'm assuming that you already have that in your cabinet. If you're looking for something else, uh, another pick-me-up, why don't you try the de-stress? And this is a boatload of vitamin B. It'll make you feel like a champ. It'll give you the extra energy without use of drugs or caffeine. Uh, de-stress is probably what you want to use. Now, we have... Um, I, I don't know if the sale's still going on, MZ. I'm waiting for you on that. But let me tell people what I do have out there. I still have my classic combination. Now, th this is my favorite trio of products. A tangy Tangerine, Osteo FX, and Glucogel. The Tangy Tangerine is your minerals and vitamins. Osteo FX is your bone strengthening formula, and Glucogel is to help lubricate your joints. That stuff is fantastic. Glucogel, if you've never tried it, you've got to try that. Once you buy your Tangy Tangerine, everything else will be at 30% off. Now, you already know about that. I'm, I've talked about that a lot. What we have, and I, I can't believe it, MZ, is we still have Ultimate Daily Classic. This is to help with your blood, sugar, uh, blood pressure problems. If you've had if you've called uh, Dr. Wallach and asked him what you should take for blood pressure, he probably recommended the Ultimate Daily Classic. It comes in a shiny green box. We also have the Synaptive from Longevity. This is to help with brain function, helps clear up your thinking, and it also helps, um, helps you, uh, your brain to communicate with your muscles better. It'll give you, hopefully, better muscle movement. This, this is to uh, help the synapses in your brain. Synaptive is what it's called. We have that as well. And, of course, your vitamin C and uh, colloidal silver, which we haven't had for a long time. We have several bottles of colloidal silver. You should stop by and get them. And that also goes without saying you can spread the love as well. You could gift those to others if you won't gift them to yourself. Ah, yes. And also we have KSEO and Flight 1080 gear. You notice my new hat? I did. Sasha, pretty yeah. snazzy, huh? Pretty yeah. snazzy. They, really great job on the etching of the logo, yes. especially the outlining. Mm -hmm. Like, that is high-quality merch right it's there. It's high-quality stuff, MZ, and we have a great sale going on right now down at the Dave Cave. There's, there's way too much for me to mention. I would be, be talking for hours. So let me tell you, buy your Tangy Tangerine, and who knows what will happen at the Dave Cave. Buy your Tangy Tangerine at regular price, and uh, it's off the chains. Will Watch you out. <clears throat> will you still be there uh, during the week? I am for, not for going. Sale? I am not going to be there Wednesday and Thursday. I'm taking those days off. But I, I, um, I don't mind showing up Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Sure, I'll be there Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. But I'm because you're on doing flight 1080 right. those days, anyhow. Right. Yeah. And I have something planned on uh, Wednesday, and uh, maybe something for Thursday. When someone shows up on a day when you're doing flight 1080, mm -hmm. do you take a, a, advantage of your multitasking uh, uh, octopus status? <laughs> I do, but you know, you 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 have to have a I have to have a co-host there to to leave them uh, talking while while I go and do that. Otherwise, if if you call if I'm on the air and you want to stop by and pick up something, send me a text 218 KSEO. I will see it while I'm on the air. I'll get your stuff ready during the break. You stop by and we'll get you hooked up. Well, what's wrong with that? Nothing's wrong with that, MZ. As a matter of fact, that number you should burn into your memory because it's going to be good forever. 218-KSEO. Doesn't matter if it's a year from now, two years from now. 218-KSEO is where you want to place your phone call for longevity questions. If you want to order online, kscohealth.com. You can get it delivered to your house, UPS, um, a post office. They'll decide which one is most economical. Get it delivered to your house within three to five business days. Great. Yeah. Now, Dave, you were on Flight 1080 for uh, three times this week. Josh, mm -hmm. you were on once, and Billy was on, mm -hmm. and you guys were on with Cammy and so forth. 
Um, it must have been pretty lively shows, huh? Because there's so much to talk about these days, particularly my favorite topic in the world, which is free speech. Yeah, well, absolutely. absolutely. It certainly seems to be in danger uh, or, or going through some rough waters right now, MZ. It, it'll make it. I mean, uh, everything will everything will work out. You don't think that we're going to be clamped down as a f- beacon of free speech? Do you think I'm er- uh, sort of paranoid? Um, I think that we will come to our senses collectively and realize that that's not the path we want to go down. I mean, you see, uh, what's his name, Jack Dorsey already kind of backpedaling on some of his uh, earlier statements and what Twitter has done. He's come out and admitted that that was probably not the best thing to do. And even though he feels that it was still right to do this to Donald Trump at this moment, he thinks it sets, it's setting uh, a bad precedent. It could set a bad precedent. But he still feels like it was justified in this case. Was but, this your segue to a personal question, MZ? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, not... I really haven't thought of a personal question, except do you have a joke for me to put me in a good mood? Hmm. Well, you know, I have a question for people. Um, I, I want everybody who shows up to the Dave Cave MZ to uh, give a testimony. I would love to hear testimonies from uh, our listeners and from our customers. If you want to stop by the Dave Cave, you can do it. We'll get you on a microphone. You might hear yourself on George Nori or, um, you know, who knows? Or on KSEO or some KSEO. S- some, somewhere else if you want to give us a testimony. But ma- make sure that you get a release from these people. Just a simple little sentence saying it's okay for you to use this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, anywhere, so so. I would love your unsolicited unsolicited testimonies out at the Dave Cave. Yeah, and, and I'm sure we can do a lot because, um, yeah, we need to freshen our commercials everywhere, both on KSEO and on Coast to Coast mm-hmm. for all, all 680 stations. Uh, here so yeah dave dave is quite a famous person he's been on uh, 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 uh commercials on the national coast to coast show with george nori for years now mm-hmm. and before that my mom was uh was sort of a uh personality <laughs> on the commercials on the health commercials she did live to be pretty old there's no question about no it no question mz so yeah. I'm gonna, I'll be out at the Dave Cave MZ until 2, just like every Saturday from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. You can text your questions or call 218-KSCO. You can also uh, text pictures of your pets. I would love to see pictures of your pets. Oh, that would be nice. Mm-hmm. You know, the before longevity pictures of the pets and after longevity pictures of the pets. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I love to see cute little dogs and cats, though, MZ. That always makes me feel better. Right. Yeah. That's good. Okay, okay, so, uh, yeah, and, and jo- uh, my personal question to you, Do- Josh, is do you have a joke for me that will uh, put me in a good mood? Honestly, you caught me off guard with that. But uh, actually, yeah, I've got one. Um, good. So I actually talked about this on Flight 1080, but uh, the actually, yeah, this one probably won't make you feel better. But um, Parler, one of their investors said, they were going to be back online by the end of the week. Well, check's phone. Yeah, it's still offline. So I'd say that's a pretty good joke right there. They said they were going to be back on. We're already on Saturday, and there's no return in sight. That's not a joke. <laughs> not a joke. Think of another one while we play the opener. Good morning. A brighter day. Can you hear that okay? Turn it up a bit. Good morning. May we bring you cheer. We've got time. We've got tunes. We've got time, tunes, and temperate tears. Get up and go. It's today, you know, on KFCO Radio. Time to get up and go. All right, good morning. It's hour number one of the KFCO spa- uh, Spatterday special with MC. Who's not too with it this day? Um, that's pretty par for the course. Anyhow, if you uh, have something that's on your mind that you want to uh, put out to uh, our KSCO audience, we invite you to do so by dialing 479-1080. Good morning. Now stay right here on KSCO Radio.
So, how far do you think this uh, toxicity is going to extend? Uh, I actually saw a report that it's being advanced that Trump supporters should have terrible things happen to them. I mean, some of the really crazy people have said they should all be executed. Uh, but the, the, the stuff that makes me think I'm listening to an old Phil Hendry, uh, you know, show where you hear those of you in the audience will know who I'm talking about. If you can remember back that far when we had um, a very talented talk host named Phil Hendry doing the afternoon drive, uh, the four to seven slot that Flight 1080 currently occupies on KSCO. And people would call up with such outrageous assertions that the radio station would get called. How can you put in, how can you put that garbage, that nonsense on? It makes no sense. And we would tell the person that, don't you realize that you've been had? It's, this is the Phil Henry and his guests are really himself changing his voice. He's very talented. He, he can make you believe that you're hearing a conversation between him, the host, and somebody else, which is really him, you know. <laughs> and once people heard that, they said, oh, they, 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 they turned from anger to um, humor and, and excitement and said, oh, my God, that is, I had no idea that it was a put on. Well, all these news stories, or most of them that I hear these days, uh, on the various news feeds, which I, I've got to psych myself into just not watching because it's 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 not good for my health to see repeated stories such as uh, Ted Cruz is going to it's it's being advanced that he be uh, stripped of his Harvard you know uh, graduation or diploma or whatever because he was a very uh, you know, strong, public Trump supporter. What, what's going to happen to me? Because I chose to use the KSCO platform for years to tell everybody repeatedly what a great president I thought Trump was. Not so much of his crazy personality, but because of the, the fact that he didn't get us in any wars and that people had been warning that his, his haters were warning that he would get us into more wars than any other president. <laughs> He's got us into no wars, right? Um, a lot of a lot of uh, his his detractors have been warring with him, though I guess. But that doesn't make a country in a war unless they're trying to do that. Anyhow, I'm just wondering if people like me are going to be executed because I publicly supported Trump. I just wonder about things like that, you know. Before and, you wonder, yeah. Let me get that joke out of the way for you. Okay, good. All right, here's the pickup, because my, by golly, like, you, you don't sound you. You sound like you just uh, had, like, a huge tub of ice cream to yourself last night. You just <laughs> rolled out of bed, and here you are. <laughs> so, did you hear about the man who was uh, half Polish and half Italian? Oh, I think I'm going to like this, but no, I haven't. He made himself an offer he couldn't understand. <laughs> That's good. There you That's go. good. Hey, listen. Let's have everybody. We don't want to put people on the spot. If you're on hold right now, you're going to call in. You don't have to tell a joke, but if you remember one that you want to share with us, that'd be nice. It'd it'd add some positivity to uh, an otherwise very negative. Uh, you know, the other thing we could do at KSC would just not talk about politics at all. Just talk about. There's a lot of other things to talk about politics that, than politics going forward. What do you think? I mean, uh, oh yes, yeah? I actually did. Yes, I actually did that on uh, Thursday, January seventh. Like when that was the day after that whole big historic one of the thirty million historical major events within this short time frame. I just didn't touch the subject because I was like, you know what? I'm mentally exhausted over the news cycle, and I bet a lot of people feel that same way. So let's talk about literally everything else but that. And so that's what I did the day after on Flight 1080. Did it work? 
Could, it was. Yeah. I mean, I, I upset a couple of people because they're like, oh, we should be talking about it. And then it's just like eventually at the end, I just clarified and said, hey, this is just the reality. I hope we could provide a distraction for you because right now is this the time to entertain? Let us heal that way rather than think about like one of the hundreds of historical events that are happening in such a short time frame. So, yeah, it worked. Um. Do, do, do you want to talk about, I mean, this is not positive in any way, but one question we can ask that I'm very interested in what people's thoughts are is, um, on the China Uber Allah show several weeks ago, uh, one of their guests was a retired general who said, I don't see any alternative but civil war, no matter who gets elected. And I, I would think that if Trump had gotten reelected, there, I think there was a pretty good chance that there'd be a civil war because that, that would have been just too much for, for his, his uh, detractors, his opponents, to be able to swallow, uh, you know, four more years. So I definitely, you know, I, I wanted Trump to win because I think he's been good for the country. And people say that he's even though he's done some good things that even some of them would uh, would agree with probably the sum total because of his attitude and his ego and and uh has not been good for the country and has made us a laughing stock around the around the world and so forth well i don't subscribe to those um, um feelings myself but i didn't feel that there would be a civ- or that there would or could be a civil war if trump lost I've changed my thinking, and I sure as hell, it scares the hell out of me, the thought of a real civil war, you know, being fought on our soils. And, like, it could be, can it happen any minute? Or maybe it can't because, you know, maybe they've got so many, um, and wisely, I guess, have... uh, these uh, natural, or what do you call it, National Guard people deployed. I suppose. In, in huge numbers. But the reality is that there hasn't been a presidential figure that somebody got so hot and bothered over that they went so far as to engrave their name into a manatee, like mm. with Trump. So I just... I don't know why that happened, but I just, the level of Trump fanboy and fangirling is just like, they got to tone that down a bit. That's just one of my main gripes because I like to do that and then get like giant pickup trucks with his name on it. It's just like, I've never seen such fanning over someone and especially to like disturb animals over it. Like I I, I haven't seen someone engrave Bush's name into a, a horse or... Obama's name into another animal of some sort, like just because I don't know why, but it's just seeing that is just some of the Trump fans just take it a little too far with expressing their love of the president. And I haven't seen that with other candidates. Right. So do you think a civil war is at hand, Josh Stevens? I, well, I, I wanted to say that with the, not even because of what happened on January 6th, but because of what happened with Mitch McConnell and Pelosi's houses getting vandalized all in the same time frame. With that happening, it's like, okay, both sides of the aisle are extremely upset at each other, so there, there, something big could end up happening. But I, I want to be optimistic that people won't get to that level because they can pick up a history book and see how well that worked the other times. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Uh, Well, let's go to our first caller. By the way, if you want to call and join the show, it's 831-479-1080, or you can email mz at ksco.com. Here's our first caller, uh, Steve in Capitola. Uh, Hey, Steve. Welcome to KSCO. You're on the air. Thanks, you guys, and thanks for the community sponsor announcement. I've been listening to during the week. MZ, it's pretty, pretty right on. Community um, sponsor talk- announcement. Wait, wait a second. What, what are you saying? No, your announcement that you run. Uh, 
on the radio announcement the, you the, run. The, the commentary about key part, there might be some people switching parties and that, you know, is that, that's what you're talking about? Yeah, but anyway, let me move along here. Um, I want to say that, um, I want to say that, you know, I would have, I would have been kind of freaked out and repulsed by, um, by the Proud Boys and uh, the QAnon a little bit. I would have been freaked out on that like a couple years ago. But quite honestly, if I read about their description of their um, philosophy, well, I have read a little bit about them, um, I kind of understand now why they exist because this Donald Trump, and, and this also answers your question about why people are so fanatical about Trump. He is the last line of defense. This is the end of America right now. We're we're going into uh, a complete reconstruct deconstruction and reimagination of a of a socialist Marxist America. And uh, people, there's people that are are aware of this, and they're willing to stand up and not only voice their um, opposition to this but show their loyalty to their country to the point of of aggression now i'm not i'm not a i'm not encouraging that or am i um validating that but i'm just saying that's kind of the that's that's kind of the conservative opposite of antifa you know antifa created the proud boy Um, that makes anyway. I, I get your point there. That's that's a fair perspective, Steve. Yeah, Anti Antifa was was very aggressive. Uh, they you know they burned our cities down. BLM uh, ran ran those uh, those so called peaceful protests and ended up ended up torching uh, all the local you know the the businesses in their communities. You know they shot they shot in cold blood a few. Trump supporters. I mean, it was very nasty all year long, and somehow the uh, the liberal press always managed to soft sell it like it was uh, no big deal. And then when when the uh, when the conservative right uh, shows a little muscle at the Capitol, one time, you know, one time they stand up for with their beliefs, and unfortunately, um, a couple of people got hurt. But one time they stand up. And all of a sudden, it's insurrection. You know, it's insurrection when we voice our opinion um, physically and materially, but the, the left got to um, just completely destroy Santa Monica Promenade, burn down, um, you know, what was it, uh, you know, Portland for what, how many months? And we had to put up with that crap for months on end. And now, you know, we... Josh, let me ask you this. Sure. With with the with the mainstream media, with all of academia, and with um, when you know you have mainstream media, academia, and Hollywood, mm-hmm. and techno and high tech technology, when you have them all against you, how are you ever going to overcome that? I, well, when you put it that way, I could see the whole perspective of feeling alienated, feeling singled out, and wanting to react in terse ways. However, I think when people start to point the fingers at the other side of the aisle and engage in all these whataboutisms, it just doesn't help. Like, there's extremists on both sides of the aisle, and I think people need to acknowledge that because you do see that problem. Like, for example, there are people on the left who tend to demonize those who support Trump or those who support some of the conservative views and putting them all under the same label of being evildoers who want to come after everything that one might deem good under a progressive party or vice versa. So there is a lot of there's a lot of negativity and 
just a lot of bad spirited notions being thrown at each side of the aisle. And I think a lot of people need to remember to try and find common ground and not all of a sudden let politics be means to create divisiveness amongst each other. And uh, just can I interrupt for a second? Go ahead. The trouble is, I think um, I think that would have been great in 1987 or somewhere in 1995. But right now, they basically want to destroy us. They want a they want a one party system. They don't want it. They don't want a dialogue. They want to exterminate our side. They want to, you know, in the old days when the armies would fight in um, in the old ancient times when they would fight their enemies. They would not only kill the opposing army, but they would kill the women and children and insult the fields uh, so nothing would ever grow again. And I feel like that's the Democrats right now. They want to actually destroy uh, the people that voted for Trump. They're, and look, look what they're doing to these people's uh, records and, and as far as getting them hired again. They're, not play, they're, they're playing hardball. They, they don't want anyone to ever come back and challenge them again. Now, Steve, I'll, I'll level with you on that in one regards. Uh, the whole parlor thing, for example, like the fact that parlor not only got taken down, but all of these people across social media are like, oh my God, look, people are post, these people that use parlor are posting from military bases and they're also posting from this location and that location and singling them out. And it's just like, are you guys really going to label everyone who used that service as a conservative, evildoer, Trump-loving, MAGA, maggot, blah, 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 blah? But the reality is, I, I see where you're coming from. I see those haste generalizations that folks are making. Like, I even signed up for Parler, too, and that got me worried. Just, But I only went on there because... I wanted to see what it was all about and occasionally just shamelessly promote all the various interviews I've done that I like doing. And then inev inevitably getting one of my favorite talk show duos to follow me on there. That was like one of my other things. Like it was an inadvertent item, but I keep thinking to myself, am I going to be placed under that same evil label that you mention? But at the well, end of the day... Josh, check this out. I have a Twitter account. It's under a fake name. I, I created a whole persona around it, and uh, but it's a little, it's a little, a little aggressive. It was promoting a, a novel that I written at the time that had had some violence in it. But on that site, I um, I did a lot of like, um, you know, I, I I signed up with a lot of Trump organizations at the time. It was pre, it was during the Trump, uh, the first Trump of. Uh, uh, when, when, when Trump was running and all that, and I was excited about it, and I signed up for all kinds of different Trump stuff and Trump forums, and I thought, and now to this day, now I'm like worried. I'm thinking, man, I hope that doesn't backtrack and somehow they find out who I really am and like come after me, you know? I mean, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. It's McCarthyism. It's it's basically the new McCarthyism. That's a fair point, Steve. Well, hey, thank you for the call and for sharing that perspective and actually getting my uh, actually asking me questions. <laughs> I feel yeah, it feels kind of wrong because most people ignore poor Josh, huh? Oh, they sure do. <laughs> well, Unless poor, they have a complaint. It's too, it's too bad poor poor old 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 MZ didn't comment. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid. He's sitting I'm back eating the, chips. The, that's why. No, oh. eating nut, eating nuts. First it was pizza, then it was nuts. Okay, if MZ is afraid, then I can understand that because there are people that that would just look for an excuse to come after him. Yeah, yeah. It's not. Uh, I I can't be myself anymore. I have to measure every word. Well, MZ, I, I, you you shouldn't have to measure any word. I mean, it's not like you could get fired. You own the place. No, 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 no. You don't understand. <laughs> you know. Um, well, MZ, did I make sense to you? Yes, you did. Absolutely. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. Long live Bill Henry and Don Dangle. But well, I, I was started saying that the, what, what you used to hear on Phil Henry, which is absurd, you hear this in real life and all the news reports today, everything. 
Sounds like I, yeah. I say to myself, this sounds like a Phil Henry thing. It's got to be MZ. MZ, remember, remember the guy, remember the character. I think it was Don Dangley, the, uh, the gay reporter. I'm a gay reporter and a gay yeah. journalist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, love, that was that was his his yeah his best one probably. I love that one, man. Hey, thanks. Uh-huh. Good to hear you guys. Thank All right, you thank you. Thank you, Steve. Take next, and that would be, uh, oh, my gosh, it's Pure Heart. Hey, guys. Aptos. Hi. Hey, guys. How are you? Oh, good show, and uh, MZ. Oh, boy. You're are you is... sure it's a good show? All I'm doing is masticating. Well, <laughs> as long as you keep your teeth where they belong, yeah. Um, Josh will be too young to remember this, but I know, I know you will, MZ. Do you remember the Capitola Mall back when malls were a big thing? Yeah, and sure. It wasn't who, wasn't all that long ago, really. And people were, you know, passing out leaflets or things like that, or other just trying to communicate, and they got kicked out of the mall because it's private. Mm-hmm. And it went to court, and the courts finally ruled that you know malls have replaced the town square, and they're really the new public town square. Mm-hmm. So now you they, they can't keep you from going there and giving your opinion and passing out things. Right. It's polite to tell them you're there, but but you can do it. So I would maintain that the social media has become the de facto new town square, and these laws should apply there as well for so-called free speech. Uh, good point. So I'm uh, kind of waiting for it to be spread to kind of come over. <laughs> that's <laughs> actually for some a... reason it's so obvious. I kind of wonder why it hasn't been done yet. But anyway, the same reason I wonder when the, the concept of hate speech first came all around, I waited for the wave of laughter. But there was deadly silence. People thought there was actually the concept that, you know, quote-unquote hate speech, you know, existed. It's someone's just different opinion. So that's bizarre to me that there's such a thing. Um, let me see. I have a little note here. I um, wonder where Vernon is these days. Vernon, Vernon, Vernon. I'd like to hear what his opinions are. He hasn't... Be good to him have him weigh in. I believe that Vernon, Vernon, Vernon. He he loves us. We love him. Always will. But I believe he is far more in, interested in social media than than uh, <coughs> old boring uh, talk radio. Yeah, I, I think I think I think he has moved on to m- m- as much time as possible spent on social media. And uh, I'm willing to bet that Vernon is not listening because he's he's connected to so social media. It's too and dangerous. We, we love we dangerous. love Vernon, and and I'm sure every time I take a uh, uh, you know a hiatus you know from the show, it, Rosie and others suggest that Vernon would be a great uh, fill-in host, and he is because people like listening to him. But you never he doesn't call into any of the shows that I can recall lately. And to me, that only uh, uh, he's he's on Facebook a lot. I know that. And he's on social media because it's more, you know, you can do more with it. That's why it's grown so much. I'm not saying talk media is shrinking, but it's certainly not growing. Not growing. Yeah, around. it needs to yeah. learn to coexist, in my view. But pure heart, you make a really <laughs> excellent point about making it a uh, making social media Comparing it to to a town square only because of the fact that right now in this whole era of social distancing with all the lockdowns, how are actual town halls taking place? How are board meetings taking place? They're all being taking they're all taking place on Zoom or any other video conferencing app. That's a form of social media. So there you have it. You, you make an excellent point, especially right now, since everything is virtual. And by the way, I yeah. hate that it's all virtual. I don't want to engage that way. I get too much screen time as is, but yeah, yeah, you make a good point. Here's a joke for the both of you, courtesy of Sue Sutherland. Mahatma Gandhi, as you know, walked barefoot most of the time, which produced an impressive set of callousness, uh, calluses on his feet. He also ate very little which made him rather frail. With his odd diet, he suffered from bad breath. This made him a super calloused, fragile mystic, hexed by halitosis. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That is great. Well, well, social media is also, the, you know, it goes to Marlboro so easily. The, the Oh My Restaurant is a perfect example for just expressing your opinion and the mob descend upon you. Josh will be well to read Josh. Um, look up Jordan Peterson, one of his essays on neo-modernism, 
where the kids are being taught nowadays you, that there is no discussion. You cannot discuss. It's a war of ideas, and there's only winners and losers, and there's no compromise. And that's what they're being taught, apparently. Maybe we is. should maybe we should change KSCO to only allow um, um, discussion from the left. KGO already does that. Well, so. If they called in, <laughs> that would be great. They don't call in often, but. Uh, I well, mean, that's guess. that's not our fault. It's the, I, mean, I always thought I was. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It is our fault that they don't call in because we don't put out um, the kind of programming that would move them to call in. We have Alex and, and most most of well, yeah, Alex does a good you, job of representing the, the left. Good well, I think the futures have changed their politics very recently. They're good people. They're, you know, I like well, they're, lots of they're different fabulous ideas. people. They're really good friends of mine. Always have been. Always will be. <laughs> But I like the fact that, um, y you know, I don't care if I, I've got a number of I like to get along with everybody. But, but, but when when people who have different political um, uh, feelings than I do, especially about, you know, a hot potato like Trump, when when things get so bad that they become intolerant of me. And they start to dislike or even hate me. That's childish. Uh, well, that's happened. That's happened. That's so bizarre. That, to that's me. happened in the last four years. So bizarre. I'm thinking of one guy in particular. Used to call in from uh, South Lake Tahoe. Nicest guy in the world. But as time went on, it couldn't. It couldn't. He, he couldn't fathom that that I could uh, like Trump. And there must be something wrong with me. And and. You know, he didn't make any any threats or anything like that, but I, I definitely, you know, felt that he didn't want to be my friend, and I certainly don't want to be his anymore. You know, I just and and there's been a number of situations like that. I didn't think it was possible. You know, and and this is all during the last four years, ever since Trump con come on came on the. The civ civilness changed. I think. Yeah. Well, that's the neo modernism is. But then let me finish up here then. So I think with two parties is not enough. We maybe have Charlie give a history of how just we came down to just two like this from the beginning. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At least five to have more nuance in what people want to choose from. And the last thing, I'd like to hear you do the uh, Rush Limbaugh commercial for Santa Cruz, like, boy, talk about a place that needs this show. You I can do, I can, can I can do, do it by heart. I can do it okay. by heart by heart right now. I'll hang want. up and listen then. Thanks a but, lot, guys. But, but but I really should do it. I can do it in his voice, you know, where I do <laughs> an, an impression of him. But somewhere we have the actual uh you, you know, uh recording of Rush doing it. He did this in nineteen ninety one as a favor to me. Uh I had just met him, uh and I uh I I said, geez, you know, you could you could do all your if you want to get real lazy, you could have all the stuff on your show be from what happens in real life every day in the <laughs> Santa Cruz City and City Council and Board <laughs> yeah. of Supervisors. He said, well, send yeah. me some info. Here's my fax number. I did for a while, and nothing happened. And then one one day, you know, weeks or months later, uh, he, he talks about um, the uh, mission. Students at Santa Cruz, California, uh, Mission Hill Junior High School have made a demand on the school administration. They want free condom dispensers in the boys' bathrooms. Free. This is seventh grade, junior high school. I need to go to Santa Cruz. I know that's not the one that you're talking about, but maybe I can find it somewhere and play it. But the one that you're talking about is, boy, talk about a town that needs the Rush Limbaugh Award-winning radio program, Santa Cruz, California. A true haven of fuzzy thinking, Ultra left wing liberals, spaced out, sparse bearded hippies, and arrogant politicians with absolutely zero business sense. <laughs> the what's mine is mine and what's yours is mine mentality is certainly alive and well in Santa Cruz, but never fear you people. I, Rush Limbaugh, will relentlessly continue to do all I can to bring reason and sanity to Santa Cruz each weekday morning, 9 to noon, right here on KSCO AM 1080. Join me. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I'll make room for others. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Take next. So who would that be? Why, it's Sean in Live Oak who has a plan of action. Hi, Sean.
Hi there, and uh, you were requesting jokes, so yeah, I have. Please, yeah. So if you, is, well, I'm going to give you a disclaimer, it's politically incorrect. That's okay. Um, profanity could get us in trouble with the FCC, though, so don't have it be profane. Okay. So there's these two bums w- walking along the railroad tracks, and one spots some feces on the radio <laughs> <laughs> railroad track. <laughs> And he walks up. He walks up to it, sticks his finger in it, and says, "Oh, it looks like feces." Then he tastes it. it tastes like feces. Then he smells it. it. Smells like feces. Then he remarks to the other bum, "Sure, glad I didn't step in it." <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I I think you know, unless we get a better one, I, I will give that the prize for the best joke of the day. Okay, so far, now let maybe that'll motivate others to come up with better jokes. But I, I've always been a toilet humor. I got a kid who never grew up. So as soon as you said feces, I sort of cracked up. Well, Anyhow. I guess that also passes the FCC test, right? I, I Probably. Yeah. So uh, what uh, with the events recently it would have been easy for me to get despondent but yeah. uh, what what's helped me a lot is uh, I um, Bill Whittle a YouTuber has put out a plan of action and uh, I'm a lot readier to do something than I am just to sit and stew in my own juices and I'm kind of bringing this up to you is that uh, this might be a person that you may want to contact and get on your show once and just, you know, like on the Saturday special, you know, have him discuss his uh, things. And Who is it? Bill Whittle. And I think uh, I sent you a couple of uh, his stuff in email earlier today. So if oh. you're interested in checking okay. them out, you can I do will that. know. Yeah. And tell me, tell me a little bit about him. He has a plan, you say? Yeah, and it's basically, uh, well, Todd Herman expressed it another way on Rush Limbaugh's show. Yeah. He's talking about flooding the zone, and that's go after every election, even if it's, you know, for local dog catcher all the way up to the top to president of the United States. And that's kind of what uh, the Democrats have done is they've gotten onto school boards and everything else, so they always... Uh, presenting their point of view and kind of uh, pushing out any other point of view. But the other thing that uh, Bill Whittle is talking about is that we need to, uh, on every state, try to get the election laws cleaned up so that we don't do these uh, repeats of fraudulent elections. Now, this is going to take a while, but this is a plan of action, and this is a plan of attack to fix this mess. Well, okay. Um, thank you for calling. I appreciate your call to the Saturday special. And I appreciate the emails to the Saturday special. Anyhow, Sean, have a great rest of the day. Here's our next caller, uh, Dennis in Salinas, Civil War Possibility. Yeah, Den, what do you think? I'm thinking that people are a little too uh, pushy in their existence, whether it be extremes on either side or even those in the middle if it gets down to replicating what happened here in the 1860s i don't think the folks are really up to it however one thing does puzzle me as to why you just mentioned gandhi as to why not a very passive and very massive resistance wouldn't work just as effectively if not more effectively certainly the people that have a more conservative bent are not going to be accused of violence doing that. And it certainly would gum up the works. I just don't think that this in the short term is, is done. Uh, my position as a more conservative leaning individual, any good. As far as president Trump, I was thrilled when he got past the first year without getting tossed out. And the fact that we got, some federal judges that are more, uh, shall we say, uh, 
bent toward following the Constitution rather than coming up with their own unique opinions, and the fact that so far we've held on to the Second Amendment, and maybe we're making some inroads in maintaining the First Amendment, although with what President-elect Biden and his uh, soon-to-be president have said, I wouldn't give that too much of a shot after the first uh, year to two years. But in any event, you got to be optimistic. And I think that uh, while I am prepared for what they call the cartridge box versus the ballot box, I would hate to see that. And by the way, speaking of the ballot box, why couldn't we follow the Russian lead where they have suddenly stopped using a lot of electronic communication amidst their government because they're concerned about being tapped? How about a federal law saying we need to have paper ballots? And if you can't figure out how to get chat out of a paper ballot, partner, it's time to hang up your voting. Be optimistic, Michael. Somehow or another, we'll muddle through this. Thank you. I appreciate those words, and I will endeavor to practice them. <laughs> okay. Wow. Alrighty. I yeah. like that perspective because yeah. of the fact that uh, there was also that other big hack. I think it was Solar Winds or something, that one company that uh, did business with the feds, and they got their stuff hacked. So more paper communications in general would be great. But also don't take away paper or vote by mail. Like, make it harder to ac access a ballot. That's fine. But I like voting at home without having to put pants on. It's the way to do it. Well, I heard that they are, they are talking about uh, if they keep the mail-in ballots, they are going to require that you mark them with your pants on. And, uh. if, you're, and, and if you're caught you know, violating that, there will be hell to pay. Damn it. Anyhow, um, all right, so <laughs> wait a minute. Our caller is gone. So here, let's just hit next and see who the next caller is. No, it's Carmina in Watsonville. Hi, Michael. How are you feeling? My heart is broken, but I'm stoic. I will okay. not allow what's happened in this nation to destroy my love for my country. Even if, the country, I, even if the country is gone? They want you to say it's gone, but I certainly will not say it's gone. We have the power. The power is in the hands of the people. And what I call to talk to you about is most disturbing. Okay. Is they want to reprogram my children or my grandchildren? Oh, yeah. That is absolutely not going to happen. Well, they want to do it, and they're in the majority, so something Well, people in hell they're... want ice water. I oh. don't think they're going to get away with it. Look, Michael, you grew up in Santa Cruz, yes? I sure did. Okay, I grew up in New Jersey. I'm a, I'm a bit older than you are. How much? I'm 78, sweetie. Oh, my God. Yes, you sure and guess are. what? What? I'm here to stay. I, I have to let you know some of my history. My dad was a labor organizer when the unions actually meant something. He fought for the average Jane and Joe. He was the man that fought so that people could own a home, take a vacation with their children, and support their families, workers. My dad was a uh, labor organizer. He was pretty famous back east. And... Um, I was raised, of course, in a Democratic household. My mom was from Italy. My dad was born in this nation. She came over with her dad, who was already a citizen. They came in through Ellis Island. We were taught at that time, whatever country you came from, to keep your tradition. But they focused on English was, a, was your first language. Nobody had a problem with that. Nobody had a problem with that. Nowadays, you open up your mail, and there's like 15 pages for different translations from different countries. Why do we do that? We do it because we've been a good country. But it's time to put our foot down. I feel the same way you do. I feel very hurt. I feel, tr I, I feel betrayed. 
we're more interested in taking care of other countries and not our own people here. They shut down the restaurants in New York City. Right. Do you think, do you think the uh, election, the presidential election, was stolen, or the two uh, congressional uh, uh, Senate elections in Georgia, do you think they were stolen? I think we had the evidence, and they wouldn't allow the, 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 the none of the judges would hear it. And what I think right now is that they're running scared. That's why they tried to push through this second impeachment. And I believe what President Trump said, the, yet, the best is yet to come. He's working behind the scenes. I think this nation is going to see things happen that they never even thought possible in the United States of America. So, well, Will there be some violence, you know, a la civil war on the way there? What do you think? I don't think we're going to have it here in liberal Santa Cruz, no. I think you might get an occasional, dis, you know, uh, disruption. I listened to uh, Rosie Schammers and, you know, uh, Six Dog Schaefer in the mornings. I love your program. Uh, I find it very difficult. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the only one in my neighborhood except another senior that, you know, was supportive. Look, I don't like the way he spoke to the nation and he, you know, was very crass, but that's the New York way. Mm-hmm. He's a New Yorker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But I don't think no. I don't think that's going to happen. I think you're going to you're going to get it on the other side of the good uh, over the other okay. side of the rock. Let, let's hope. Let's hope. I wish someone would be more specific. But how can you predict? It's like who has a crystal ball. Listen. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Keep and, the faith, and, Michael. Don't okay. allow it to don't allow it to get you down, sweetheart. Okay. I will. I will try my best here. Okay. Our next caller will be Scotty in Santa Cruz. Hi, Scotty hey, in Santa Ma- Cruz. <clears throat> hey, is Michael. It, how are you doing? Is this the Scotty I invited? Yes, it so, is. Okay, good. <laughs> so here, yeah, you here wrote a really here. thoughtful uh, thing. And by the way, that was such a long email. That's why, why I, I wanted you I to call in. I was up pretty late putting down those thoughts. and But, of course, uh, unfortunately, I tested positive for COVID. So I have a bunch of extra time on my hand to reflect on my thoughts and what's been going on in this country recently. But before I get to that, let's start with a joke. Okay, please. That would be great. If the, if the uh, national bird is the United States Eagle, if this insurgence was successful on the 6th, we would have to change the bird to a pigeon. Coo, coo. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good. Uh, okay, so first of all, let me say. We, we'll hold you over. We'll hold you over, by the way, because it's 1058 now. And, oh, and it I, sure I, is. I noticed that. Well, for, let me, let me <clears throat> I don't want you dead. I don't want people coming out after you because you have a difference of opinion. That's not what this country is about. But what I saw on the 6th disturbed me very deeply as an American, not as a liberal, not as a uh, hippie Santa Cruzian, but – Something deeply disturbing that's been bubbling beneath the surface of this of, of our psyche of, of, as a country, and I can't understand why people on the right and, and particularly Republicans cannot see this danger that has that we've been warning you about for the last five years. And what might that and be? Came, and, it came, and it came to a head on the sixth. You <clears throat> got people running into the Capitol. Wanting to hang Mike Pence. So, please, with all this hyperbole that you guys are throwing out, you're trying to save your, you're going to have to take, you're going to have to take reckons uh, with what's happened and really check your your inner core. You're okay. At a well, I, I, here. I, I Hold really, on, Scotty. I really want trend continuing into our weekend, keeping it in the mid 40s overnight, mid to lower 70s during the day. There is going to be a wind advisory in effect starting on Sunday night until Tuesday. Time now for hour two of the Saturday special. It is AM 1080 KSCO. Oh, hello, darling. I hate to hang up on you, but I'm sorry, baby, but I have to go. It's time for that wonderful record show. And we do have a 
pretty much a full board of callers today uh, on the Saturday special on your favorite radio station. We're going to go back to a call with Scott and let him finish. I'm sorry, baby, but I really got to go to KSCO Radio. Bye. Okay, and that Scott, for your information, if the voice sounds uh, familiar, um, Scott used to, uh, many years ago, uh, before Alex and before um, uh, Rick O'Shea, was uh, Rosie's co-host on Good Morning Monterey Bay for a number of years. And so we're happy to hear Scott uh, back here on KSCO uh, with an analysis of the situation, what's going on in our world today. So continue, Scott. Well, I'm going to make this uh, brief since you have a, uh, a full board. Obviously, you know I have a lot that I talk. About, I'm going to want to talk about, but let's see if we can condense this. Uh, first of all, for all you uh, uh, Second Amendment enthusiasts, you don't want the government to come after your guns. Good job, because uh, you gave them a really good reason to come after your guns now. And uh, as for free speech, I, I, I don't have any problem with somebody expressing their opinion, but something that's been ex- uh, been plainly uh, proven time after time after time in the courts to be proven a lie, and if you're going to continue to to spout it. Is it any wonder why these people got all riled up? And as as for what I believe, I don't believe that the majority of the people who went to the Capitol were there to conduct an insurgency. I think for the most part, they were there to protest. However, mob rules. People get together and they lose their mind and think that they're whatever that they're doing, justified in their own mind, uh, somehow gets out of control. And that was a very dangerous thing that I witnessed on the second. However, now that you've driven all these people underground by taking Trump off of Twitter and things like that, which I have mixed feelings about. I think he should have been muzzled a long time ago. But by doing that, then you're only giving uh, further ammunition to his cause. And I'm afraid that uh, our current administration may use that, like we did after 9-11 with the Patriot Act, to start using that as an excuse to start breaking encryption codes. So if you didn't want a surveillance state, Good job. Well, I'm not sure. Maybe my understanding is false, Scott, but all these uh, court cases that were dismissed Mm -hmm. because they said there's no evidence. It's my maybe I'm wrong. Do you know for sure that they that any evidence was being allowed to be? Um, no, uh, presented. All the, all so, so how do how can they say there's no evidence if if because it wasn't even be allowed if it wasn't even allowed to be presented? It has to be presented on the basis of its merits. And time after time again, when the judges came to look at it on the basis of its merits, said no, this, this is completely bogus. You have no leg to stand on. And when you go into a court. You are compelled by law to tell the truth. Under, uh, otherwise, you're going to be charged with perjury. And that's one thing that doesn't happen on the, on the Senate floor. They don't have that, that rule, even though they have an oath to support the Constitution. They can lie all they want, and that's on both sides. I have a, I have a funny feeling that some people are going to want to talk to you. Would you mind staying on hold here in case uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, lock, I'll lock you in, okay? Sure. Uh, all right, good. Lock you in. Let's go to our next caller. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Is Dave there? Hey, MZ, yes, I got 30 seconds. I, I don't want to slow things down. I'll it's, be out at the okay. Dave. okay. Take as long as you want, Dave, because this is important. I will be out at the Dave Cave until 2 p.m. today, just like every Saturday, 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. I'm out there today as well. We still have, for right now, Ultimate Daily Classic and Colloidal Silver. We've sold quite a bit during the last hour, uh, but we still do have a few bottles left of each one. And, of course, we still have uh, Tangy Tangerine, Osteo FX, Glucogel, and even some Arthrodex for your four-legged friends. I'll be out there till 2 p.m. today, MZ. Support your favorite radio station. If you can't do it in person, go to kscohealth.com. If you want to do it by phone, 218-KSCO. 
That's 218-KSCO. Dave, I might have asked you this before. Has anybody ever, has any human, uh, uh, two-legged per critter, mm-hmm. tried the arthrodex and to see how it works? Yes, and they really? grew a tail. Yes, they grew a tail and a bunch of fur this and pointy nice. ears. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Try it well, for yourself. It's only 35 nose. bucks. Is that nose cold? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So I'll be out there till 2 <laughs> p.m., you guys. Okay. Go very out and good. see Dave. But wear yeah. a mask if you show up in public. Right. Okay. Now, um, absolutely, yes, you have to wear a mask uh, even if you're out. Now, let me see. I'm going to take next. Who is that? Oh, my God, it's Bob and Carmel beginning to look like Venezuela. Hi, Bob, you're on. <laughs> hey, I'm, uh, I hope you'll give me a little, little extra time because I've got to disagree with Scotty. Uh, no okay. court ever looked at any evidence. They all turned, them da- turned down the cases because they weren't filed soon enough or you know, there was some excuse, and I'm convinced that the judges were scared to death of the retributions they might have. And by the way, it's coming out now that the whole – riot on in Washington was pre-planned. The authorities were warned about it. Pelosi and McConnell were alerted to it. Uh, if he does a little homework, you'll find out that's what's coming out. So uh, they knew about it. But here's what reason I said about Venezuela. I think our song next uh, Christmas, unfortunately, will be, it's beginning to look a lot like Venezuela. And the reason I say that, they're all, look at all the eerie parallels to what happened in Venezuela. First, uh, it clearly was a rigged election. And the reason I say that, just based on statistics, probability, four key states shut down approximately at the same time. I don't think even one key state in the past has ever stopped counting. So here, four of them shut down. They all shut down with Trump hundreds of thousands of votes ahead. Then they reopen later, and all of a sudden Biden's ahead. Uh, they're all, they were all using the Dominion County, you know, the vote county machines, which were de- developed, the whole software was developed in Venezuela to ha- help Chavez win. That's been oh, made clear. Uh, now, do you listen to anything other than Fox News? Now, well, forget Fox News, but... Anyway, let me finish. You can have your say. Didn't answer your question. Now, like Caracas, let me finish. You just got a little bit to Uh go. Please. Now, just like Caracas, we have a huge military presence in our capital. And whose fault is that? Our only hope, I'm afraid, is that Trump is our only hope. And I think if we do go down the tubes, the blame is going to fall on Pence. And the reason I say that and – is that there were five states that wrote legislatures that wrote him asking to allow them to reconsider their uh, electors because of fraud they had uncovered, and he believed that he could not do that, yet there are constitutional scholars that said that it's not clear that he couldn't do it. So anyway, I don't want to argue with Scott. I Just let me put that out there for uh, people to consider. Okay. Well, thank you for your call. Yeah, thank I enjoy you. talking to you. Okay, uh, next caller will be um, Anna Marie. Hi, Anna Marie in Watsonville. Well, hello, gentlemen in Santa Cruz, doing such an awesome job for our country and all Americans. Thank you so much. We are. Yes, you are. Oh, good. And so, I, I you support what happened at the Capitol then? I absolutely do not. Any American who has character and love for this country, no matter what its faults are, we have been blessed so much. As the Chinese people say on Thursday, I forgot their names, Amy and the other guy, and others who have come from communist countries. I have a very dear family friend who escaped from communist Poland, you know, with his family. And, you know, the horror stories I have heard from people who have escaped other countries, and we come here, and you have some idiot walking up to some poor old elderly couple just sitting at an outside cafe having a cup of tea and talking about their great-grandkids, and she can just walk up, disrespect them, and take their stuff and drink their tea, and there's nothing anybody can do about it, because if anybody says anything, they're racist. You know, this kind of garbage 
you know, we have to stop and think about the golden rule. It's a simple thing. It's not about your race or your religion or your sexual orientation or your political stand. It's about treat people the way you want. It's simple. And we have Mm -hmm. an evil taking this country asunder. And for Democrats, any Democrat, I'm not putting down any Democrats. I was raised Democrat and was a Democrat until maybe six years ago. But it's really difficult to step back and to understand how logical, intelligent, educated, maybe that's part of the problem, these people can accept and even applaud rioting day and night, day and night for over, what, two or three months, fires, and yelling and screaming, ripping people out of cars because they're trying to get gas for their vehicle? Who does that? How is that okay? How is it okay to slander and scream and accuse and make fun of a sitting president, any president? I don't care how much you don't like him. I get maybe you don't like his facial expression, his orange face, his hair, his whatever. It's His, his mannerism, his personality. Yeah, it's personality, whatever, but here's the thing. He's not a politician. He's never been a politician. He's just been who he is. All I care about, and I think that we should all as Americans should care about and care about our fellow American brothers and sisters, is what is best in the long run for our country, for the solidity and the validity and the stability of our country, for our Uh children. Okay, Uh, I'm going to have to take issue with that. But I, I appreciate you bringing up your uh, your opinion. Michael, can I continue? Sure. Okay. This is another problem that I see is that we're, too many people are giving this person a pass. So many people had stood up when this guy was running to be president saying how awful and how dangerous it would be if we elect this person. And even the people who, like Ted Cruz and Mitch McConnell, were just lambasting this guy before he ran, but because he's charismatic and he's able to galvanize your party's constituency into something that we can get people behind and win the, uh, win the presidency, you free your chips in, and, you, and now everybody is losing because of this president. And until you recognize that fact and internalize what, you, what you've been complicit in by supporting him, then there is no hope for this country. We're going to continue to have problems like this. And my worst fear is that now that we have all 50 uh, capitals on high alert and we're going to have a great insurgency of people who feel emboldened that they're able to do this because they feel justified in a lie that their country is being taken away from them and the election was stolen, now that we have all 50 states, if there is a sudden attack, now Trump, still president, still has presidential power, can uh, uh, declare martial law, and he's won. Is that really how you want to have your well, president? What do you mean, what, what do you mean he's power? won? What do you mean he's won? He won't be president after, after next Wednesday if, at if, noon. If he, is, if he, if he declares martial law, law between now and then... Can't the new president undeclare the martial law? He doesn't get to stay on as president. If he has an army of supporters behind him, you really think that he's going to give up power? An army. An armed... Do you understand how many guns are in this country? There are more guns than people, and they're mostly held in your guys' hands. And suddenly, you know, now the rest of us who are having to go through metal detectors at an airport because we have to be secure, your people don't want to obey by follow that law because it suddenly infringes upon their rights. When you say my people, you mean Trump supporters. Republicans. Uh, Trump supporters. Just plain old Republicans. I'm not a Republican. I'm an independent. Okay, and if I well, and if I was still a Democrat, where I, that I was the first forty six years of my life, I would have supported Trump. If if Obama had done this, I would have lambasted him just as hard as I'm lambasting Trump and putting the blame at his feet. 
Now, what are your thoughts about the allegations of Republican officials and or staff giving tours to members of this insurrection of the Capitol building the day before? Or the panic buttons that had been removed from offices or people who had intimate knowledge of the blueprints of the congressional floor? Or all the people in the security who were uh, 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 departments who are saying, no, it was the FBI's fault. No, it was the Capitol Police Department's fault. No, it was Homeland Security's fault. Well, what if nobody was at fault? And this was actually done very successfully because the very people who ran, who stormed the Capitol were already embedded in these particular departments. I see. Uh, I have- I heard you say one thing, not one thing that is factual that Trump himself is guilty of. I wasn't calling to praise Trump to say he's such a great guy. I am talking about what's best for the country. And when people speak from a place of emotionalism, he this, Uh he another thing that Trump, you know, if Obama had done this, what exactly is this? He didn't, what did he do? It doesn't matter what the man does. He has put up with four years of constant slander. Of, what if uh-huh. he's of everything? What is the whole problem? Is the what inter- is the whole problem? Is the lie from the very beginning saying that if he wasn't reelected, that the election was rigged, and that lie has been perpetuated all through all throughout the election to the point where okay, I can understand that. Seven million people feel disenfranchised because they don't feel like their vote was counted. But that's only because Trump lost by seven million votes. My He's a loser, is, and nobody wants to admit that they lose. Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. I was a huge important. Alex Jones supporter, and I had to come to grips with what I'm following is not healthy. It isn't true. And if I continue to follow people like this, I'm not only going to put myself in danger, but I'm going to put others in danger through through this insanity of conspiracy beliefs. But what if the conspiracy is true? I mean, I'm just saying what if. The question can be, from your point of view, is it possible? Because if okay. it's possible, then maybe it is, but maybe it's not. Maybe you're completely wrong. But when you make statements okay. like, the lie, but you don't back uh-huh. it up. How do you know it's a lie? You don't, <laughs> and you have nothing I to do. Up. Well, I, I, would, I would have to say that uh, uh, 60 judges who have already heard the case and found them baseless, and, and the fact that every one of these cases never uh, alleged voter fraud. Why? I find because that curious. So, and to do so would be uh, 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 perjury because there was no voter fraud. You can't allege something that didn't happen. It's going to be immediately thrown out, and all these judges do it. I understand where you're coming from, and I do believe you make a valid point. But I'm asking if you could just, you know, I, I feel like you're coming from a little bit of emotionalism. I, I am. I had just saw my, my capital taken over by people who that think that it's with that it, that it is appropriate just because they don't believe that uh, uh, just because they don't believe that the election uh, was properly won doesn't make it true. And this is dangerous to continue to perpetuate this lie, particularly when you have people who are calling up and saying, "Well, I think that uh, uh, the Proud Boys were start by uh, uh, QAnon," and not only is it repudiated. But I think you've got it. You made a good point. That is dangerous. You have hey, no idea hey, how um, dangerous these people are. Hey, Scott, uh, if you yes, were uh, if you were Jack Dorsey or Mark Zuckerberg now, uh, would you um, cancel the uh, the um, you know the accounts of President Trump and <sighs> his supporters and anybody who talks about the election <laughs> possibly being uh, fraudulent? Oh, God. I, I have a real problem with that because in doing so, you set a really dangerous precedent of silencing people who disagree with you. Yeah. Okay. And so I the answer, really the answer bit, is the answer is no I, to that question. But right? I also, but I also think that people have to be responsible. You can't. The only time that you can yell fire in a crowded firehouse is, or in a crowded movie theater is if there's actually a fire. Okay. There was no fire. 
and okay. people are storming out of the. Out, well, out I, of the I, I wish you, I wish you would give me a capital. yes or no answer, not not a. Um, he, he, not a I, I, washy. Yeah, I can see both sides. Yeah, I don't I, think. I, I think. I, I think it would have been better to not suspend the accounts because not only. Do you maintain this illusion of free speech? But I also think it would be good to have every tweet and every communication from, from Donald Trump to be able to be put down and, and labeled as Exhibit A, Exhibit B, Exhibit C. Who's going to decide what the exhibit is? Who's going to monitor it? Uh, the Congress. Mm, I don't They're think the ones who are going to run a trial. I don't think that they have the time to do that. So, you yeah, know, you either can... you either have free speech or you don't. That's what it boils down to. You hey, listen, Scott, want want to thank you. <laughs> want to thank you for, thank for you, participating. Sir. It's great I to really, hear from you after a long I, time. I appreciate, even though we disagree, that you give me the, the the platform to express my ideas and my opinions and my thoughts. And I would like to think that if the situation were reversed, you would give me that. But I know the lo a lot of people would not give me that that uh, courtesy because mm -hmm. they believe in censoring opinions that are different from theirs, and that's right. what's, that's what scares the hell out of me. And, but, and it should, but mm -hmm. we also cannot continue to perpetuate a known lie. That's okay. dangerous too. All right. Bless hey, you. Thank hey, you. Thank you, everybody in KSU Lane. It was good to be on again. Okay, take care, Scott. Here's Mary. Uh, yeah, first. Whoa, whoa, Mary. Mary. Mute the Mary radio, please. Oh, boy. Mary, well, Mary was listening on the radio. Mary. <laughs> no. Nope. All right, put her on hold and then we'll get back to her. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Sally in Pacific Grove. She's been waiting a long time. Oh, Sally. Hi, Sally. Hi. Okay, so, oh, shoot, I wanted to tell you my joke, and I, it's on my phone. Well, but anyhow, I, I, uh, I actually blame a lot of the problems that we are having right now on the media. There is a conservative media and there's a liberal media. That's not supposed to happen. It is supposed to be news. Are you there? What are we? Oh, I think you give both sides. I, I, I think it's interesting that Scott says that we are perpetuating a lie. How the hell heck does he know it's a lie? Maybe it's not. But anyhow, let me tell you my joke because it is pretty funny, okay? Good, good. Love it. One other thing I was going to say, I think it would be fun someday to do a show on how people got through this past year, what brought them joy. Yeah. I think that would be an interesting. Okay, so anyhow, I'm going to give a warning. When you drink vodka over ice, it can give you kidney failure. If you drink rum over ice, it can give you liver failure. When you drink whiskey over ice, it can give you heart problems. When you drink gin over ice, it can give you brain problems. So apparently, ice is really bad for you. So warn all your friends. <laughs> Hello? That's not funny. Oh, it is too. <laughs> apparently, ice is really bad for you. Oh, ISIS. No, ice. I, you know, it, when you put gin over ice. Yeah, that's what I, I that's what I heard. And I don't <laughs> listen. What's what's wrong with me? I thought I had an excellent sense of humor, and I don't see the humor in that. Obviously, it is not the ice that is dangerous for you. It's all the booze. Uh, I'm a little. I'm oh, well, a little slow. In that case, it's a little funny. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Okay, but good. But anyhow, um, I do think your friend Scott is is just seeing his own side, and he doesn't want to hear the other side. There's no doubt in my mind that there was no way Joe Biden got 10 million more votes than Barack Obama. It didn't happen. It's BS. That election was stolen by those machines, mostly, I do believe, the ones that shut down and started back up again two hours later. Yeah. Anyhow, I think your friend Scott has got blinders on. He doesn't 
of the thought is maybe Donald Trump wouldn't have been so quote unquote outrageous if they had been kinder to him. They called him treasonous. They said he was colluding with Russia. It was all a flat out lie. Is Scott willing to admit that, I wonder? Sharks. Anyhow, I, I don't know, and unfort I should, probably shouldn't have let him off. I, know, I wanted to make room for more callers, which we have a full board. So anyhow, yeah, thank they you, literally Sally. just tag teamed the lines all at once the moment they opened, and I was just scrambling <laughs> with my head cut off. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyhow, I I truly believe, and I just think in two years that the Republicans will take over the House and Senate, and in four years, I don't think it will be Donald Trump. I tell you. I would love to see run for president is Jared Kushner. I think he'd be a wonderful president. Well, yeah. Yeah, Anyhow. okay. All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Our next caller is going to be Johnny in Silicon Valley. Johnny. Hello. You're on. Are you Johnny. there? I'm here. Are you Are there? there? Are you there? I'm there. I'm okay. there. Can you hear me? Keep. I'm tired of saying, can you hear me? We can hear you. Say your okay. piece. Do it already. Okay. okay. What you had there was uh, was Capital Man. It was all the guys that would already show up to Burning Man, and then they showed up to the Capitol. It was just they were shut down all, all summer. There were the riots and other things in other cities, and they all showed up, and that was just a giant party. So that people think there was some great conspiracy. There was no great conspiracy there. That was just a bunch of people locked down for a year. And what did you expect? Oh, okay. Well, I would think about all the all the rights that went on all summer long in other cities. They were seeing that, seeing all that stuff's going on. So I, if you saw those guys on those videos, those guys weren't conspiracy people. Those guys were just a bunch of alcohol infused, you know, probably doing a lot of other drugs. And that's what you get. And most of those supporters of Trump weren't doing those riots that, you know, they didn't go in there. If, if you look at that group, that's not the normal. You know, most Trump supporters, I would say, are in their 50s, not those young kids that went in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. What do you think? Uh, pretty much that's what I think. And, and also on the voter, when the other guys were saying, when Trump had the call to the Georgia governor, he only said there were two dead people that voted. And a statistical – everything that went on is statistically wrong. There is no possible way – if he would have said there were maybe 2,000 to 4,000 dead people who voted, you know, given the number of uh, voters in, in Georgia, you would accept that. But it wouldn't be enough for Trump to tr overturn Georgia. But when he said there's only two, then you go, that's impossible. There is no way out of 4 million people that voted, only two dead people voted. I'm just saying that when when, when uh, Scott was saying there's no evidence, you look at the, where the evidence led. Why did all those just those particular cities have the overvote? Why was it only the states that they needed to win that were the swing states and none of the rest? So I, I, I'm not saying you know he's saying there's no evidence there, but it if it if it looks bad, it's bad. And that's just that's just my view from the outside. So I'm not saying the voting machines. I'm saying these guys were very smart. They took the 2016 and 2018 people who didn't vote, and they went made sure that those people voted that year. It wouldn't be that hard to go prove, but nobody wanted to see it. I, don't, I think you're right. The thing was fixed, but they did it very brilliantly. Oh, yes. Okay. And I'm not well, stopped. I'll let you Thank you, Johnny. I'll let you and go. You have a wonderful and, day. You too, Johnny, in Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. Here, we're going to try okay. uh, Mary. Oh, yeah, I just, it's Thank not, you, it's you not, it's, well, it's, I, I, I think it's a lost cause for now. She's just going to have to call back. Oh, okay. So I should drop the call? Yeah. Okay. Call is dropped. Uh, and immediately it was taken, the space was taken by someone else. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, there's this, a lot of people want to talk today. But anyhow, Don and Selena, you're on. L louder, please, uh, uh, um, Josh. I can barely hear him. Out there is this. There is no civil war. There's not going to be a civil war. For the past 100 years at least, we have been in a war of extermination with a death cult. And that's liberalism, progressivism. 
They worship zero. Everything's going to kill us. Climate change, racism, the coronavirus, everything's going to kill us. And what happened this year was they made their big move. Their big move was over 300 lawsuits filed in states by only Democrats in order to illegally, unconstitutionally change the rules of elections to tilt the field in their favor, where votes that otherwise would have been thrown out were made legitimate. That's the big cheat. That's the big steal. Of course they'll say there's no voter fraud because they legalized voter fraud. And, And right now you had people who rioted at the Capitol. Why did they riot? The other caller touched on it. These people have been stuck at home and pent up and this and that. Not really. They've been at home and they saw what the hell's happening to our country. And they woke up that these people want to get rid of us. And now they're fighting back against it. President Trump was one of our last bulwarks against this death cult. And he's gone. So now people are frantic looking for some way to fight against this. Uh, And uh, why do I call it a death cult? Because that's what they call the Trump voters is a death cult. They always accuse you of being what they already are. That's called projection in abnormal psychology. Yeah, projection in abnormal psychology. Uh, But uh, take a look at at what's going on around you. Alan Dershowitz on the the news uh, accused the Congress of being the most illegal Congress in the history of the country. And you have to agree with him. Yet they still do it. I've never cared for, for Dershowitz's politics. But lately, I've, I've really liked the things that he said. I'm I know. Gonna, I'm going to congratulate him. I have his personal email address, at least from a few years ago. So, Oh, great. Well, give him a big thumbs up. But Because he sees what's coming. Uh-huh. What's coming is death. What's coming is destruction. What com- what's coming is them wanting to kill our culture, our so history, it seems our it's morals. Small. So you don't see a civil war coming, you but you see some you see a war and death, right? That you wouldn't call we've it a been, civil war. We've been in a war for the past one hundred years and haven't realized it. These people want to get rid of us. They want to replace everything. They want to destroy our history, destroy our culture, burn it to ashes, and from the ashes will rise their utopia. But the utopia that they have is a topia that's not human, so it doesn't work. That's why that's why we had the the millions of deaths in Nazi Germany, the multi millions of deaths in Russia, the maybe 100 million deaths in China. That's what we're looking at, and and we just can't conceive it. Hmm. Okay, Don and Selena, it's always great to hear from you. You are a cogent, okay. intelligent human. So Thanks, MZ. Okay, here comes our next caller, good old Wendell in Reno. Hey, Wendell. Hey, Michael. How are you, you feeling? Know, uh, I think what's happened is uh, we're being overcome with this new uh, this new emotional virus that I refer to as disturbulosis. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, I think what's happening is people need to take the thorn out of their ass. Um, because what you know, you could be bothered by everything. Hey, it's a beautiful day outside, uh, KSEO listeners, and um, you know, go outside and do some deep breathing. You know, yeah, and, that's what I'm gonna do. There you go, and chill out, and uh, don't let everything disturb you. I mean, you know, you can be disturbed about every single thing you can think of, but the way to approach life is to chill out and accept what you can change and also understand what you cannot change, okay? And, okay. Uh, and be happy and, and, and get, get the damn thorn out of your ass. You know the guy who does Don't Worry, Be Happy, the song? Uh, so I just found out that he's a San Francisco resident. I, I'm going to verify that and maybe get him on the show sometime. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Excellent. 
All right. Okay. Thank you, Wendell. Always great to hear from You're you, welcome. too. Terry, Colonel Terry, who's well, going to offer, good offer to debate and station obligate. Oh, God, don't. Please don't hit me with we're obligated. I'm sick of this. Well, I, in fact, you do have some legal obligations. Uh, the FCC recognizes them. So do the libel and slander laws. Uh, so do the laws of uh, incitement of harm and injury to others. And at the top of that list, I want to inform you that you're uh, having the fellow on who castigates worse than castigates, accuses, again, with no evidence and baseless that he ever offers, Stephen uh -huh. King of orchestrating the murder of John Lennon. Uh -huh. For you to continue to broadcast that w without any evidence, and furthermore, it's putting Mr. King's life potentially in jeopardy, MC, to obviously any intelligent, sophisticated person. Some of the crazies might carry out Mr. Lightfoot's uh, uh, accusation and harm Mr. King or his family. And uh, I think King's got a right to, to file libel and malicious uh, prosecution and malicious threat lawsuit against Mr. Lightfoot, potentially against KSCO for carrying Mr. Lightfoot's baseless, fraudulent, malicious message. Uh, Terry, wh why don't you just go call the FCC and call the Justice Department and file a lawsuit against KSCO and Could destroys? I do that? Why, why should because because you are um, because you are, are are fanning the flames because making a call like this on the radio right now tells me that you want harm to come to Santa Cruz because you're putting ideas into people. Not in the people's not, minds. That listen, listen. Mr. Lightfoot wants harm to come to Stephen King. That is the problem. And KSCO should not be complicit in Mr. Lightfoot's malicious message. Okay, okay. Um, uh, are, you, are you ordering me to not take uh, calls from Stephen Lightfoot, whom a, a lot of people want to hear? The, the same reason. Are you ordering me to do that? No, I'm not ordering you. You want to buy the radio I'm station? Do you want to buy the radio station and, 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 and all the responsibilities that go with it? Maybe I should do and, that. And okay. okay. Come and talk to me, okay? And come no, with I... more than a, and come with more than a nickel in your pocket, you big talking asshole. <laughs> okay. Sick and tired of him. Uh, who's next? Uh, who's next? Frank and Soquel. Frank, you're on the air. Uh, yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Michael. Uh, yeah. I, I love the way you finished the uh, previous call. But uh, we're getting to the point. That, that guy is. That guy will sue me for calling him an asshole, and I'm going to do it five more times. Terry, Colonel Terry is an asshole. 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 Even though he was nice to my mother and gave her a few rides, I wholeheartedly there, there, agree. There's some good, there's some good sides to him, but he's basically an asshole, and I'm beginning to think every pore in his body is an asshole. Oh. Where are these sounds coming from? You're on a roll. Oh, okay. Okay, so so I have the joke of the day for you. Yeah. The joke of the day is Joe Biden as president. Okay. <laughs> Well, and I don't think I don't think that's And MZ, they have... were obviously coming from Josh Josh Stevens. Where else would they be coming from? I I'm not very smart. I couldn't have figured that one out. So I have uh, a little something to say here, real quick, and then I'll let somebody else talk. But I just want to say, you know, it came to, it came to my uh, thought process the other day that on the eve of the 21st day of the 21st year of the 21st century, in a lockdown capital. Surrounded by, surrounded by miles of barbed wire fences and over 20,000 armed troops, five times more than we now have in the Middle East, by the way, uh -huh. Joe Biden, who needed treason on the left to win a fraud of an election, will be installed as president. The uh -huh. opposite of all of that say it all, folks. The armed insurrection is, is, not, is being done to us, not by us. China is laughing. Well, I certainly agree with that. Boy, are they laughing. And, uh, yeah, and a lot of your other They got us right where they want us, and we're not as big as they are, but we're pretty big. We're a pretty big country. 
That's, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're only 4% of the uh, world's population. We're uh, roughly one, population-wise, roughly one-fifth the size of China. But, you know, but if, we, if, uh, if America bands together with their allies around the world, if we have any left still, you, you know, gen what, I guess what I'm getting at, generally speaking, there's a lot more people on the planet than there are people in China. We, you know, globally speaking, we still outnumber them. So what I'm getting at there is that you know, if we, if we stand together united with our friends around the world, we can still do something about it. But, uh, um, but uh, with a uh, Made in China president uh, being installed next week, um, it's going to be a lot tougher. Uh -huh. And a lot of this was earlier made all kinds of good comments on, you know, uh, along those lines, basically. I, I can't really add to it. Uh, um, we're in for a wild ride starting next week. And, 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 I, and, I'm, and I'm more... How I'm, wild? Do you have any predictions? Because I, I can't even figure it out. I'm just baffled. Well, I, yeah, I, I'm, 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 uh, I can't predict the future, you know, but, uh, I mean, and, uh, but people, but people that are calling in and saying, saying that, uh, you know, we'll get through this, uh, take a walk on the beach, breathe deep, you know, that's all well and good, but, uh, you know, there's no guarantee. Together we will get through this. There's no guarantee we'll get through in it. these, in these challenging times. And how, you know, well, ever, ever the optimist, you know, but how will we, how will things look on the other side when we do get through it? Um, God, I don't know. How the Republicans are talking about the, how gleefully they're going to, uh, um, you're, we're, we're going to take back the Senate in, in two years. We're going to have a resurgence of, of, uh, of uh, conservatism. You know, they would have to get it back if they hadn't lost it in the first place. You know, it's uh -huh. just, I blame the rhinos right now for losing the election and losing the Senate more than I blame mm -hmm. the left. The left, we know. What they do, you know, but when when the uh, when the rhinos on the right uh, tell us that they're going to fight for us and then they don't, you know, who's actually the worst enemy? So, okay, all righty, Frank. Thank you very much for calling four seven nine ten eighty. Here's Joe in Santa Cruz. Hey, MZ, Joe. you just made, MZ, you just made my day, man. I mean, you have a filter, but sometimes you do a Chuck Norris kick on that filter. And you just went after Colonel Terry and called him a big orifice. I love it because you're uh -huh. just, you know, you're just being honest. Uh -huh. You're just being honest. Yeah. Okay. Uh. So I, I called about uh, my problem with liberal thinking. That other caller, I guess Scott, that liberal founding person, mm -hmm. he said um, about uh, oh the, the uh, Republican leadership bad mouthing Trump when he was campaigning because they didn't particularly like him or didn't want him to yeah. represent the Republican Party. But when, when, he, realized, when, he, would, when he would say, lo, you know, low energy jab or, or little Marco, <laughs> they were sort of responding to, to his abuse, his verbal abuse and making fun. But see, yeah. but, but, see they, but see, the Republican leadership, they think like Americans, not like liberals, where they're thinking, hey, we don't particularly like this guy, but he has huge support. And we don't elect the president. The people do. And since he has huge support, we got to go with him because we want the people to have their say. Unlike liberals, they'll tell you what to think. And if you don't think the way they think, they think you're an idiot. And they'll make laws to force you to think the way they think. One exa another example is if they had their way, they'd ban driving. Not for them, but they'd ban driving because they would save lives. Mm -hmm. Which, true, it would save lives. The problem is... The over 99% of us drive okay. We don't drink and drive, whatever, whatever. So a, whenever a tiny percent, there's a problem, they inflict all this restrictions or whatever on over 99% of us. So that's my problem with liberal that's thinking. That's exactly right. Okay, thank you for calling. And we're getting close to the end of the show, so we want to get everybody on who's on hold. Okay, Rory, you're on. Thank you. And I, uh, I wanted to point out to people, Peter Navarro, that works with the Trump administration, did three uh, descriptions of the steel. The first one was called the Immaculate Deception. I forget the second one. And the third one just released in the last couple of days says Trump won. And it details in some great depth all the anomalies, all the, the fraud. There were over uh, – Giuliani alone got over 2,000 signed affidavits that never got into court. This was never heard. The whole thing was shut down. And that's all any honest citizen is requesting. Let's hear the details. 
And the thing on the sixth, I heard an interview yesterday with Michael Yohn. He's a famous war correspondent out of the Mideast, uh, self-funded by his his uh, his uh, subscribers. Anyway, he's so intimately involved with watching Portland and Seattle, he knew the name of the Antifa cells. He said there was upwards of 240 Antifa members there. He said they were all their A-team. They called cells like Lucky Charm and Arch Lady. I don't remember the third one. This was a complete setup. And I don't know if anybody else has talked about it. I'm trying to refer back to your caller. I think it was Scott. This was a this was a false flag. It was a classic false flag, and unfortunately, some Trump supporters got suckered in to going into the Capitol building, and one of them paid with their life. So, beware, citizens. We're in for some rough waters. With God's help, we'll hopefully get through it. But I've, I'm more concerned now than I've ever been with a choice of president if Biden is actually installed. And to say, oh, he'll no be installed. Uh, oh, he'll be yeah, installed. Well, I think. Hold on. All right. And. Thank you. Bye. Okay, thank you. Here's um, Gray and Soquel. Hey, Gray. Hello. I just had to start off with saying that I'm here in a volunteer office in Soquel. And, yeah, hold uh, on. Hey, wait a second. Josh, Josh Stevens, this is so loud. Yeah, I, I got I, it. I, I, I think I have permanent uh, hearing loss. Sorry. Now. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and I was going through some paperwork, and there was your mom in the paper. So I thought that was kind of interesting, your best friend. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh-huh. So, well, yeah, she, I'm listening to you. She got in a few times over the years. Yeah, yeah, I used to listen to her a lot. Um, I was uh, thinking about the difference between uh, the freedom of speech that we've discussed before between private places and public pra- places. And I think that even as a registered Democrat, I think that uh, people have, have a right to uh, go to Washington, D.C., and I don't think that the, our president right now – uh, instigated anything and, and when people say that uh, he or other people were telling lies about the election it's like that's their perception they have a right to take it to court so i appreciate this subject today and i wish you would sing again well you know when people say that it's the end of the show so you know i i need if people want to hear me sing they should request at the beginning of the show and come up with specific requests I would love okay. to. It would put me in a much better mood, but it's too friggin' late I know. now. I know. Especially, especially okay, next since. Time. Yeah, since. Okay, next time, w- would someone like to do a? Um, would we like to do an MZ sings karaoke, I- apart from and different from the Saturday special, or should I do an en- entire MZ sings uh, uh, Saturday special, or have one have half of each Saturday special, one the first hour or the second hour. BMZ sings. Yeah. Some people hate it. Some people think I sing out a better of, mood. Well, even if I sing out of tune, that's sort of funny, you know, and that yeah. would put me in a better mood. I definitely <laughs> get in a better mood when I'm singing. Boy, so but anyhow, thank you. Maybe we'll look All into right, that for you. next or some okay. other time. All right. Uh, yeah, Richard N. Watsonville. Hey, Michael, you might want to con- uh, consider doing a song before you start your program on uh, on Saturdays, kind of like. Uh, the guy after you does a prayer, you know. Oh, maybe ought to, maybe ought to do a, a song that's kind of runs in line, you know, congruently with the uh, with the subject of the day. Even that's a great idea. It should become a, a standard segment, yeah. you know, part part of the program format. And then if if I do a good job, or if it's a good song, or if it's particularly appropriate, do then, it the then it might it might lead to uh, some requests during the program. But you see, I don't want to force my singing on people. I just don't. I think that's crude. I really do. Even though I I feel very good when I sing, even if I sing out of tune, I just feel it makes me happy. It's one of well, the what I like that... about it is when you sing, you don't cough. Hack and hew, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know something else? That's very this, uh, funny. This uh, Albert or Uber <laughs> Alice thing, you know? Yeah. Uh. Why don't you get a hold of the Communist Party USA? Okay. I mean, well, I'd love to hear them go at Amy. I don't think so, they will. I, in fact, I'm positive they won't. They, you they, think they, they agree they, they with her? They, they don't know. They don't engage in debate. 
Michael Rockins, isn't he one of them guys? Oh, 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 Michael Rockin. Wow, what a great idea. Yeah. Uh, Mike Rock, he's, he, I, I have highest regard for, I don't agree with his politics, but I've always had the highest regard for Mike personally because he has said to me many times, I will debate anybody, anytime, anywhere on any subject. And he said it on this very station. Yeah. All right, yeah, thank it's you. Great. Thank you for that great suggestion, Richard Ann Watsonville. Okay, Mr. Lightfoot himself, the man who Terry wants me to ban because you're a danger to um, Steve. And I'll, I'll, thank you, Michael. I want to thank you for standing up for me. I would say this to Terry. I think he just has done himself in as a former Pentagon employee uh, who showed his true colors. He's a plant from, from the CIA. and yeah, I mean, anyone who stands up and defends Stephen King, when everyone has seen his matching face getting the autographs, I mean, what listen, can I say li- people? listen, listen, Stephen. Uh, I, I don't, I certainly don't agree with you, but I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a free speech guy, you know, and uh, I'm, I, I don't know if there are other talk hosts who do anything but hang up on you once you get to that Stephen King call, kill John Lennon assertion that you, that's driven you for many, many years. But I, I think uh, I, I'm. I was very upset with Terry because he thinks I'm irresponsible for and 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 that I am responsible or possibly or 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 cont- well, what's the word? Mike, uh, he mentioned he, he mentioned Stephen King trying to sue me. Well, Stephen King tried to take me to court, and I was victorious. I took on his lawyers, and I won. I told the judge in the real world, Stephen King can sue me for slander or defamation. Okay. But he okay, well, we'll, we'll do this right. We'll do this at length on a few, because uh, we're at the end of the show, and I promised we'd get everybody on. So, uh, caller asks a question. Go ahead, caller. Is this me? It is you. You're on the air. Oh, so I was listening to your show yesterday, and I he- heard a sense of sadness in your voice saying that you didn't believe that your radio station would be on much more, much longer. And There's I no way it can be. To... There's no way but it can I'm be. But I'm sure... Why? Because they're coming Who's... after they're coming after people, and not not everybody. In, we have a lot of people who can't stand Trump on the KSEO staff, but the owner is has been a, a has been a, a verbal Trump supporter for years, and they're gonna, they've made it, they've made it clear that they're going to punish uh, Trump supporters that they know about, and I'm a public Trump supporter. I just am. And you truly believe that that is the case. I believe that, I, that KSEO is not long for this world because we supported Trump, because the, because the owner of KSEO supported Trump. And okay? who's coming for you guys? Uh, the people in control. Do I sound overly paranoid? Probably. But that's what I believe. No, I, this I don't, is what I, don't I believe, believe too. <laughs> what? And I'm scared, and I'm just trying to, like, make sense of it all. And when I heard you speaking yesterday... It really just rang home, and this may be the last uh, word. uh, 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 u